Hi everyone, hi guys, what's up? Fala here from iMurginet. Today I came back with a new video on installing a new Windows technology called Nano Server. How many of you have heard of a Nano Server? Probably not much. Yeah, it's a new technology actually, it's a new installation option that came with Windows Server 2016 that, that enables actually a server with powerful, op, powerful uh, performance with a less overhead and less resources needed. So first, let's start. What is the nano server? That's the first question to ask. So the nano server is a remotely administered server operating system, optimized for private clouds and data centers. So first, it's remotely administered. It doesn't have any local logout capabilities. The only thing you will be do, you will be able to do, as we see in the demonstration, is just the initial setup to enable the things that are needed for remotely administering this server, such as the IP address, uh, the firewall rules or ports to enable the communication, and the WinRM. So here we have, it is similar to Windows Server in server core mode, but significantly, significantly smaller. It has no local logon capability, and only supports 64-bit applications, tools, and agents. It takes far up less disk space, sets up significantly faster, and requires faster fewer updates and restarts than Windows Server. That's one of the big advantages of using Nano Server. When it does restart, it restarts much faster. The Nano Server installation option is available for standard and data center editions of Windows Server 2016, and of course now, 2019 as well. So, so here are some scenarios of using a nano server. A nano server is ideal for a number of scenarios as a compute host for Hyper-V virtual machines, either in clusters or not. So it can be a great compute resource on which you can install different roles of course it's limited in roles for example a nano server cannot be a domain controller at least for windows 2016 as as i recall it can also be uh, suitable as a storage host for scale of file server it can be installed as a dns server as a web server running ias or as a host for applications that are developed using cloud applications Cloud application patterns or run in a container on the virtual machine guest. So let's start our demonstration actually by going into installing our first nano server. So here I'm running in a virtual environment, so I installed uh, Windows Server 2016 and 2019 that will act as the host and in which I have installed the Hyper-V role as a nested virtualization to install the nano server because nano server actually uh, as a guest mode actually it creates a VHD and the VHD format is only for or VHDX and those formats are only working with Hyper-V cannot install them as a virtual machine on VMware or any other virtuality tool or other tool. So first I'll make sure that I have, let's see if I do have the, yes I think I do have it. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. Sorry about that. I will just until it loads up. Oh, 
Okay, so it's a Windows Server 2019. Okay, let's install uh, a Nano Server <coughs> 2019 instead of 2016. So just open the folder, actually. It looks a bit different than Windows Server 2016. Let's see if I can find it. This is the first time I'm doing this on 2019, by the way. So, worst case, I'm going to revert back to 2016. Okay, so I'll explain to you guys what's, what's happened. I was supposed to find a folder called Nano Server within the installation media it's usually in the root of the installation media but I don't see it here so what I'm going to do instead I'm going to change the available devices settings I'm going to put the image for Windows Server 2016 instead. Okay, let's try now. Open folder to view files. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to copy the entire folder for Nano Server into a local locally created a folder so I'm going to create one folder on the root of the C I will name it uh, nano server let's paste it Now, after we've pasted the folder that we need, we'll open a PowerShell session as an admin. We'll browse to the location where we put the files. Okay. So I will list just to see what we have actually. And I will go to a form, the folder named Nano Server Image Generator, and I run the following command import dash module. Period backslash because it's a script nano server image generator dot psd one. Okay, it's imported. One way to confirm that it's imported fine if we type get command and when you don't know the exact name, you can use the star actually. To use the uh, uh, likely search, the search that contains the word that you are searching for. So as you can see here, guys, we got three commands that are related to Nano Server, and we will start creating generating our image for the Nano Server. We'll use the command new dash nano server image. We need to give some command lines. So the first command line would be deployment type. There are two deployment types either 
uh, guest or virtual machines actually or host to install the server nano on nano server on a bare metal bare metal server on a physical machine in this case it will be installed on as a hyper-v virtual machine so i will select guest next we will have edition as we mentioned earlier there are only two available editions in nano server either standard or data center i will go with the data center edition then media path media path actually is the the letter of the either the media path either the dvd drive or the usb usb stick in this case is d so media path call backslash then base path base path actually is the location where we put the file so we're, we copied earlier the uh, the folder the folder related to nano server and then target path it is the full path of where the VHD or VHDX would be stored. So it's going to be. You don't need to put it on the same folder, by the way. So in, in my case, I'm going to put it end of the first nano server. Sorry, I made a mistake. Actually, I didn't copy the file directly under the root of the C. I created a folder in it, so I'll copy it in the first nano server. Nano server, let's name it my nano SRV dot VHDX, and computer name. This is the name that your nano server machine will have. It will be very useful when joining to domain so I will name it my nano SRV and dash storage this is the command line to install the file and storage services into our nano server I click enter so it's asking us to enter the administrator password so I'm gonna type a password and the image generation process will start so usually it doesn't take that long actually because the the disk will be empty it has only the uh, few files that are required by the nano server and as we said earlier the nano server doesn't take that much space It requires much, much less resources, uh, whether memory resources, hard disk, footprint, or even the CPU usage. So it's taking some time to install. We'll get it running, no problem. It should be done soon. As you could see guys, the nano server has a unique way to install it. So it's not an option that comes like the standard or GUI uh, when running the wizard 
of Windows Server installation, but it's rather it has its own way to to install and configure. Okay, I think we're done. No, not yet. It still goes with the process. It installs. Now, as you can see, it installs the file and stores uh, storage package or a role. One other good thing about the nano server actually, because it it's uh, low requirements and because it's not a GUI, it requires much less maintenance as well. Even to maintain it, it doesn't take it doesn't need frequent updates. It restarts fast much quicker so it results in lower uh, downtime and uh, better availability so that probably explains why it's optimized for private clouds and data centers actually okay great so now Installation is done. We can double check and verify by browsing to the folder created. There you go. So here's the here's the hard drive we created, the VHD. And as you could see, it doesn't take it didn't take that that much big space, 500 megs. It's not it's nothing. Okay, so now let's move to the next step. We we'll run Hyper-V and we'll create a new virtual machine. We we'll click next in here. There's a name. We can name it the same name that we gave earlier, My Nano SRV. This is just the name that will be displayed on the Hyper-V manager. It can be different than the machine, but preferably to match so that you know which machine. Uh, here it gives you the option to store it on different locations for the Hyper-V virtual uh, Hyper-V files, but I will leave it in, in the default location. As you could see generation one or generation two of Hyper-V. Generation one actually was the first generation when Hyper-V appeared and arrived. It supported both 32 and 64 guest operating systems to include some older versions of Linux, uh, Unix, or even Windows 7 or Windows 8 or Windows 10 32 bits. Generation 2 it supports only 64 bit and it has only UEFI based firmware. Uh, if you remember what we said about nano server in the beginning actually is only support 64 bit applications so in that case i will go with generation 2 for the memory requirements actually 500 meg 512 meg looks good but for now i'm gonna go with one gig the connection i will select my network adapter next and here we're not going to create a new disk we're going to choose the existing disk that we already created and 
next one finish. And I will click connect to run my servers. Once you click connect, actually, this is something to mention. Once you click connect, it doesn't turn on the virtual machine on that. It just opens up the console where you can view your virtual machines. You need to click on start or action start. It's up to you. So it's loading. After the machine will load the file, and we should see our Nano server soon. Okay, it's ready. So that's the image that appears. Well, that's the preview that appears once you log into your or once you open your nano server that's all you see just the username domain password and domain if you remember the account that's created by default is administrator and the password is the one we set earlier when we were generating the nano server image Domain, there's no domain for now actually. As you can see here, it gives you some basic information about your nano server, and that's it. It's installed up and running. So, in an upcoming video, we will probably look into configure our nano server and doing the post installation task, including uh, setting up an IP address, a static IP address, setting up the DNS, uh, configuring the remote access uh, rules actually in the uh, firewall and the WinRM. Until that time, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. I wish you a good day.